Have you ever heard of Mr. Hero? No, I haven't. You've never heard of Hero? Yeah, I've okay. heard of Superman, but... Oh, yeah. Superman. Well, this hero was a different kind of... He wasn't a Superman or a Batman or something like that. He was a Greek philosopher who came up with an idea for an engine and wrote it down and drew it out, and years and years later, scientists found it. And there's a copy of it right there. It's called a hero's engine after Hero, the man who invented it. Hmm. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to light the blowtorch and put it under there like that. So what's going to happen? Well, I think the water will heat up, mm -hmm. and some of it will turn into steam, mm -hmm. and then it'll come out these things. Yeah, the little holes And through there. the holes, and then it'll propel the thingy around. Okay, now you've heard of Sir Isaac Newton? Yeah. yeah he was a philosopher that, and scientist that came along, you know, hundreds of years later, and he had a uh, theory called action and reaction. Well, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You've heard about that. Yeah. That's how rockets go and so forth. Does that apply here? Yeah. If the steam is the action, what is the reaction going to be? The spinning. The spinning, right. So the steam coming out here is going to push that thing back like that. Yeah. All right, let's try it. I have my safety glasses. Are your glasses safety glasses? Yeah, they okay. are. Okay. Because you see, we're going to heat the water and change it into steam, so there's a little pressure in there. So it's a good idea to have safety glasses. Now, I heated it up before, so the water should be warm. So it shouldn't take too long to boil. Yeah. Going backwards. Good. Then we know if, if, if uh, when the steam starts coming out, we'll know for sure that it's due to that, there it right? Is. Ah, there's some steam just beginning to come out. There we go. Oh. There we go. Hey, that's wicked. Neato. <clears throat> Got a little too much water in there. Okay. And what did you say, as a neato? Yeah, very. Now, it's kind of hard to make this kind of a hero's engine because you have to have a glassware. Now the string is unwinding. You have to have glassware and little tubes and all that kind of stuff. Here's another version over here. I'm gonna take a look at it. Looks like a condensed milk can with a knitting needle stabbed through it. Yeah, stabbed through it. Well, it's actually soldered there so that the whole thing is airtight except for little tiny holes at the top. You see them? Yeah. There are four of them around there. And uh, I've got it sort of pivoted between two uh, little sheets with little dimples in it. And listen. Yeah. What's inside? Water? Sure. So it's just like that one, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this one's all made of metal. So I position it so that the point of the knitting needle just goes into the little tiny dents, so now I can pivot. Now all we have to do is heat it up. Same thing should happen, right? Here's a sort of a modern version of Hero's engine. Okay. There's some steam coming out already. All right. There you go. The steam is hot. Yeah. Looks like a merry-go-round. Yeah. So if you, I don't think you're going to be making one of these, but if someone ever asks you how to make a uh, hero's engines out of a milk can, you think you can tell them? Solder, solder a needle through it, put some holes in the top and bend them sideways, and of course get some water in it and heat it up. Now, have you ever seen this principle other than here in the laboratory, any place in everyday life? Mm. The principle of hero's engine. You I haven't? probably have, but well, I can't you can? remember. Well, now well, back. I think I can give you a clue. Hey, just wait a minute. I think that's a hero's engine. Why? Well, because the force of the water coming out of the arms pushes the... Uh, the whole sprinkler top round. Very good. So you got my clue. Yeah. Now, can you think of any other example of a hero's engine? Uh, no. Well, meet me tonight at the parking lot at about dark, and I'll show you a spectacular example of hero's engine, okay? Okay. Hey, Karen. Here's a probably the most uh, spectacular example of a hero's engine. Have you any idea what this is? A firecracker? Well, it sort of looks like a firecracker, and it has gunpowder inside.
But the important thing is here, here's the fuse right here, which is down here like that normally. And I'm going to light it then with this match on the end of a stick. What do you suppose will happen as the flame gets down here and it ignites this gunpowder-like stuff inside? Well, I think the force will come out there and then yeah. it'll turn this way. Right, it'll make it go like that. And I have no idea what's going to happen because I've never fired this kind before. So I think it would be a good idea if you go back there by that fire extinguisher okay. and stand by while I get ready to light it. That's the first one, and here comes the second one. Oh! Pretty loud here! Here comes the third! This is extremely wicked. I don't assume that you look at a potato and think of an artistic medium, do you? No, not really. Well, it can be. I'll slice it in half. Okay. And then you could use a knife to carve a design. Yeah, okay. But instead, here is a pencil with erasers removed. And you use it sort of as a carving tool like that and you won't cut yourself. So here, okay. carve a little design of some kind. That's the idea, like that. Makes just kind of like a little straight line. Okay. Now make one going the other way. Kind of make like an X. Oops. Well, you could actually get another pencil and sort of squeeze it together and you could make a fine line, but that's probably good enough for you to get the idea. Okay. There we okay, go. Okay, there you go. Now, what you really need next is a stamp pad. Or you can use poster paints too, okay. and you've made a stamp. Here, take it like that, push it down hard into the, into the ink and put it down over there. There you go. Like you made a, a reverse, cross. Yeah, yeah, a reverse cross. I've made some ahead of time. Here, try that one. Okay. See? Made That's an a, O. Oh, here, try this one. I'll make kind of like a fancy little design. Yeah, fancy little design. So you see, you can let your artistic expression uh, d dictate whatever it is that you'd like to hit, push, whatever you'd like to uh, okay. carve. That one's a triangle. A triangle, yes. Tr here's the last one. That one's a star. Yeah, that one's neat. Star. So by um, putting together various combinations, you can actually change colors right in midstream if you want. You could use, uh, get a piece of cardboard and put the kind of design on it and then write a little note and you can make your own Christmas cards. Yeah, or uh, with a birthday card or yeah, something Or a like birthday that. card with a potato stamp. The lion has been called the king of the African jungle. He may be a king, but not of the jungle. Lions much prefer the grassy plains, where their chief supply of food lives. Their brownish-yellow coat blends with the dry grass, which allows them to approach much closer to a potential meal. Like other members of the cat family, they spend most of their time sleeping. Like pet cats, they have 30 teeth, adapted for hunting and eating flesh. They can silently stalk prey on padded feet, from which they can extend sharp claws. Their eyes are adapted to see in dim light. But unlike other cats, lions are social animals, living and hunting in a pride developed around a nucleus of three to 12 females of breeding age. Most often, there are several adult males and, of course, cubs of various ages. The animals they hunt are not easy to catch because they can run much faster than lions. The females are the chief hunters and are most successful at night. Lions are the only members of the cat family that cooperate during a hunt by spreading out and each one stalking the prey. An antelope that detects one lion and runs from it may come within range of another and be caught. The pride shares the meal, but the last to eat 
are the cubs. After a successful hunt, lions go back to their primary activity, sleeping. Tannis, I assume you'll have a scissors, some string, and a washer at home. Yep. Uh, you can put together a puzzle like this. See, the string is looped there around one of the holes in the handle of the scissors, and at the other end is the washer that's too big to go through the hole. Of so, course. Yeah, the trick is, how do you get the string off the pair of scissors? Well, I don't know. Somehow the string would have to fit around the scissors well, to get you off. Know, go ahead, fool around with it, see if you can get it. And then, then I'll show you the sort of the science involved. Okay. Hmm. Well, you have succeeded in tying it even stronger onto the scissors. <laughs> no, wait, let me, where, where did you, what did you do? You went like that? Yeah. Like that? Okay. Let me show you the principle involved. Okay. Scientists, especially mathematicians who study various ways of, of looking at surfaces and closed figures, call this a closed loop. Oh. And, and it's, it's a, a form of topology, really. What you have to do is really take that end point, that of the, of the rope right there, run it through that over to the washer. Watch. Oh, okay. You think you, think you got the idea? Yeah, okay, I think I'll so. do, I'll take it off, and then I'll expect you to put it back on. Okay. See, you go through like that. Then you can pull it down and get the washer through. And then when you pull it the other way, It comes undone. It comes undone. Okay, now it's just as tricky to put it on. Go ahead, put it on. Okay, I'll try. Put it through the first loop, right? Then through the second. Okay, now come back and go through that one. That one, that's it, that's the idea. And now and pull it so you can get the there. washer. Okay, and now when you pull it up tight, you get it back again? There. Right, you got it back to work. So remember, that's a pretty simple sort of puzzle. Here's another one, based on somewhat the same idea, but it done a little differently. Here's this, see this piece of thin cardboard with a slot cut in it and a hole, and two buttons at the end of the rope this time. Yes. And the buttons are too big to go through the hole. Okay, <laughs> problem, get the rope and buttons off the card. Okay. Hmm. May I make a suggestion? Sure, okay. Remember how you, r you ran the thread through the one side of the scissors? You know, you know the, yes, this time don't yes. run the, th the rope through, but run that strip through that hole. Oh, okay, I think get I understand the, get the idea? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then I have to fit the button through right. there. Now you have plenty of room to get the button through. Okay. Now pull it back. Okay, now you get... There you go. There. Okay. <laughs> now as I say, this is a sort of uh, tricky stuff based on, on that idea of topology in which scientists study the various ways surfaces and various figures go together. Your last problem, put it back on. Okay. Same way I got it off. All right. And it's on. But it looks impossible, doesn't it? Sure does. Yeah, well, you can make that very easily and have fun trying to trick your friends. Eugene, you've seen uh, those construction sets are, that are on the market where you can make bridges and cars and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Well, I have my own version, but you go to the supermarket to get it. First of all, you need some, some sticks. Two Here sticks. they are. Right, toothpicks. toothpicks. And then you need some joints. Gumdrops. And these have several advantages over the sets that are on the market because you can put the, the stick in any place you want and at any angle. Go ahead, I'll start you. What are you gonna make? Um, a pyramid. Okay. First he uses yellow, then green. Another stick. And now red. And 
And if I may make a suggestion, the top, I think, should be black. Okay. All right. You see what I mean? How they can go in at any angle? You can sort of adjust them, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Now, you did that in just a, a few seconds. AJ was over the other day, and I gave him some gumdrops and toothpicks to play with, and he made a moon lander. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what these are supposed to be, antennas, I guess. And here, if you really let your imagination go, look what you can do. Centipede with only mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, six, six, eight legs. And then, of course, the big advantage of these is, may I take yours apart? Okay. Because when you're finished with them, you can eat the joints. Thank you. Dr. Robert Mitchell took this photograph to show you what you can see if you simply look up at the sky at night. The three stars in a row help identify the constellation Orion, which the ancients imagined as a hunter. The three stars are his belt. Two of the 15 brightest stars in the northern sky are in Orion. The red star above his belt marks his right shoulder and the white star below that's part of his sword. Fall has arrived and winter is coming when you can look up and see the belt of Orion in the night sky. Well, Lala, we've been having fun with, uh, what is the program called? It's called Color Paint. Color it's Paint. PC Junior. On yeah. the PC Junior, okay. Now, what have you got there? There's, it looks like a shuttle. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's a shuttle. So what are you going to do with that? Um, I'm going to move it. Move it? Blast it off. Okay, blast it off. How do you do that? Okay, well, first I'm going to take my little pointer thing here. Yeah. I'm going to go to the square. Yeah. And then I'm going to make a square around my shadow. Okay. Let's okay, so you've now it. outlined the shuttle. It's by itself. Okay. Yeah. Now what do you do? And I press you the do... button so it stays. Okay. And I press this, and now it'll move up. Oh, I see. You're moving the thing up here right to there. Yeah. Okay, but you've got a big white thing there now. What are you going to do with that? Um, I'm going to go to fill. Fill? Yeah. All right. And it'll fill it in. And I have to change the color over here. Okay. And fill Put it, it over in. there and say fill. Ah, there it goes automatically. Yeah. Okay. I better change that to fill before something happens. Okay. What, what did you do there? I changed that to fill to paintbrush, but I'm going to go to spray paint. Spray paint. Okay. Yeah, to make smoke and stuff underneath it. Okay, so you're going to have some. So what kind of smoke do you want? Right. There's lots of patterns here. Well, you go ahead, choose. You're the artist. Okay. That one? All yeah. right. Now you're going to have what? Oh, I see. And it looks like you're using a spray gun. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And it sort of looks like smoke, I think. Uh, yes, it does sort of look like smoke. Now, you're moving the mouse around to do all that, right? Yeah. Hmm, let's see. We can go to paint now. Paint? Yeah, paint. That looked like a paintbrush. Yeah. And f we're going to fill this in a little bit. Oh, I see. So that you're now filling it in with that color. Yeah. yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go to white. White, okay. And we'll make some clouds. Uh, that's with the paintbrush. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah, that's very neat. Now, Lala, tell me, <clears throat> in general, what are the things on the left? On the left? These are what you can do, like painting and filling it in and spray paint. And Brush sizes, it looks like yeah, there's a square. Yeah, you can do ovals. pencil. Okay, And you pencil. can make little squares and stuff. Now, on the right-hand side, what are all those things? Those are the colors. And when you change the background to black, they're sort of yucky. They're ugly so, colors. Ugly? Yeah. Ugly. So we'll change them back. Okay. Okay. Like that. See, like they're that. nice colors yeah. now. Now, I see a bunch of, of uh, things up on the top there. It says file uh, oh. and all those things. What are those? Well, okay, with file, you can mm -hmm. get stuff. You can save stuff. You can cut things out. Yeah. And you can just quit if you okay. want. Okay. No, <laughs> see? you don't want to quit. No. Okay. Okay. And edit? Edit. You can undo it. Like, if I press undo, something, my cloud okay, will go, because, because that's the last thing, thing I did. did. I see the and then I can invert that. it. Mm -hmm. See? Ah, you change it all. And you're doing all that moving with the, with the little mouse yeah. in your hand. Yeah, and I can and flip it horizontally and vertically. Okay. And I can merge it, show page, and clear. Okay. I don't want to clear that. Yeah, well, now then, clear, no. And then next is modes. Uh, you can move it. That's what we just did. Okay. Um, you can make a copy of it. Mm -hmm. You can make 
the shuttle of transparency will be blue. Right. Then I think there's a print there, so I gather if we had it hooked up to the color printer, you could print it out. In fact, yeah. isn't that what, what these are? Mm-hmm. Oh, here's printing that, who did that? Jason. That's Jason, but it's upside down. Okay, there, it says Jason right in the bottom. Here's one of my favorites. It's upside down. Upside down. <laughs> I made that one. Oh, you made the fish and the bubbles and the whole thing? Uh-huh. Okay. So I gather you're having fun doing this, uh -huh. and, and it's certainly much easier than working with pen and paper and whatnot because yeah. you can erase. It doesn't take as long. And you can put it all in memory and bring it back and work on it later if you want. Here, Jason, stir that one up. Okay. And then take the ice cubes out of the other one and put them in this dish, will you please? Okay. Now we have two beakers, one with hot water and the other with cold water. Mm -hmm. And I want you to put your hands in each one. I remember doing this experiment before. Where? Out of one of your books, I think it was. Mr. Wizard's Supermarket yeah, that's Science. the one. That's yeah, the that's one. It. In which you're supposed to put, put, get warm water mm -hmm. and cold water. Now, what happens when you put your fingers in there? Well, they seem to be desensitizing. In other words, the cold doesn't feel as cold anymore, nor the hot doesn't seem as hot. Right. That's because you have sens sensory cells in your hands and over the rest of your body that are temperature sensitive. And they sort of get used up. They get sort of tired. So after a while, the hot doesn't feel as hot and the cold doesn't feel as cold. Yeah. You've done that in the bathtub, haven't you? Mm-hmm. It feels sort of hot at the beginning, then you have to add water. To right. Because, well, part of that is warm. because it's cooling off, but also your sensory cells are getting sort of accustomed to the feel. Now, uh, switch hands. Ooh, does right. that ever feel weird? Why? Well, it took me long time to feel the hot and the cold. Right. That's because the sensory cells that were now accustomed to the cold, when you put them in the hot, they didn't respond to that, did they? It took a while. It still sort of felt cold. Still, yeah. still sort of felt cold, but it took a while then for you to feel the heat. And then it took a while for you to feel the cold with the other hand. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why scientists almost never test the temperature of something with their hands because your hands and the rest of the, uh, your body is not accurate, not accurate yeah. at all in measuring temperature. So that's why they have all kinds of very accurate thermometers. About the only time you've seen uh, squirting the baby bottled oh, milk the onto mother? the wrist, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that's a fairly sensitive part, and she can tell whether it's uh, the right temperature. Now, you know what the rest of the thing was. Yeah, you uh, take your hot and your cold. Mix and them you, together. And you put your hands in, and then you mix them together. Okay, and then... so put half of Fill half of cold and half okay. hot. Okay, that should do it there. It's a hot. Now, if you make equal amounts, they should be half the temperature, right? Of each of the, of the extremes. Yep. Okay. Now you know what to do. Yep. My hand in the cold. And the hot. And my hand in the hot. Let them stay there for a while until you get accustomed to it. Still feel hot? Still feel cold? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, now put them into the water that's halfway in between, and what happens? It's hot, and this hand feels warm, and this hand feels hot. The cold hand now feels hot, Yeah. and the hot hand now feels cold, cold, in spite of the fact that the temperature of the water is the same for both hands. It's kind of weird. So, it's, so, you, so you don't rely on your uh, sensory cells that respond to cold and hot because they're very unreliable. And you've done that every time you step into the bathroom or you put your hands in hot water. So it's kind of a fun trick to do to fool your senses. <laughs>